In Chicago, a teenage boy is being held behind bars tonight, accused of nearly killing a seven-year-old trick-or-treater on Halloween. And as Kenneth Craig reports, a young girl was just an innocent bystander. City police investigating a double shooting in South Baltimore. This was a scene along the 1600 block of Ramsey Street just before 930 tonight. Responding officers say they found an 18 year old and a 19 year old victim shot in their arms and legs. They were taken. But first dramatic and exclusive video of a drive by shooting that injured a 15 year old girl in New Jersey. And um, it's probably one of the best demonstrated empirical findings, namely the importance of fathers uh, for their children in the entire social science literature. It's also one of the least known in our culture and one of the least known um, kinds of intelligence and understanding, one of the least known in our media and popular society. For you. Uh, the, 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 the problem, the, the biggest burden that black people have, in my opinion, again, is the percentage of blacks, 75 percent of them, that are raised without fathers. Uh, and that has every other social negative consequence connected to it. Crime, uh, not being uh, able to compete economically in the country, being more likely to be arrested, that's the number one problem facing the black community. And when I hear people tell me about systemic racism or unconscious racism, I always say, give me an example, and almost nobody can do it. So I want to talk to you about the effects of fatherless homes. Do you think a father missing in the home is a problem? Or do you think it's not? There's a balance. But if the father's missing, I'm going to give you some stats. Not coming from me. I'm going to give them to you. I'm going to read them to you. 63% of youth suicide are from fatherless homes. 63%. 80% are rapists with anger problems comes from fatherless homes. Children with fathers who are involved, let's check this out, 70% are less likely to drop out of school. 70% of fathers that's involved are less likely to drop out of school. Now look at this one. 75% of all adolescent patients in chemical abuse centers are from fatherless homes. 70 Five percent. Hold on till you had. I got some more. I know you. I know you're sweating right now because you don't want to hear these. But I'm gonna give them to you. Daughters of single parents without a father involved are 53 percent more likely to marry as teenagers. 711 percent. That's right. Look. 711 percent are more likely to have children as teenagers, and 164 percent more likely to have a premarital relationship and 92% more likely to get divorced even if they do get married. 90% of homeless and runaway children are from fatherless homes. Is that enough to make you up? I'm not through yet. 71% of pregnant teenagers lack a father. Did you hear that? 71% of pregnancies are from fatherless homes. Do you think not having a father in the home affects our next generation? 1890, 1900, you look at census reports, a black kid, believe it or not, was slightly more likely to be born to a nuclear intact family than a white kid. Even during slavery, uh, a black kid was more likely to be born under a roof with his biological mother and biological father than today. What's happened is we launched this so-called war on poverty in the 60s, where literally Lyndon Johnson sent people walk, knocking on doors. I, I, I lived in the 60s, and people knocked on doors, 
apprising women of their availability to welfare, provided there was no man in the house. Uh, and we went from 25% of blacks being born outside of wedlock in 65 to 75% right now. And you look at how much money that we spent on welfare, uh, and the lines are parallel. It was a neutron bomb dropped on this country, not just in the black community, but on people in general. Uh, at one time, only about 5% of whites were born outside of wedlock. Now 25% of whites are born outside of wedlock. I was in college in 1970, and there was a report called the Moynihan Report, uh, The Negro Family, A Case for National Action. It was written by a liberal, by a man who became uh, a Democratic senator for the, from, from New York. And at the time, 25% of black kids were born outside of wedlock. He said, my God, this number is, is horrific. If we don't do something about it, it could get even higher. Well, fast forward, 25% of white kids are now born outside of wedlock. It is the number one problem in this country. And what we've done, in my opinion, is we've economically incentivized women to marry the government. And we've allowed men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And now we have this. So do you Hi everybody. This Sunday is Father's Day, and so I want to take a moment to talk about the most important job many of us will ever have, and that's being a dad. Today we're blessed to live in a world where technology allows us to connect instantly with just about anyone on the planet. But no matter how advanced we get, there will never be a substitute for the love and support, and most importantly, the presence of a parent in a child's life. And in many ways, that's uniquely true for fathers. I never really knew my own father. I was raised by a single mom and two wonderful grandparents who made incredible sacrifices for me. And there are single parents, like my mom, all across the country who do a heroic job raising terrific kids. But I still wish I had a dad who was not only around, but involved. Another role model to teach me what my mom did her best to instill. Values like hard work and integrity responsibility, delayed gratification, all the things that give a child the foundation to envision a brighter future for themselves. That's why I try every day to be for Michelle and my girls what my father was not for my mother and me. And I've met plenty of other people, dads and uncles and men without a family connection, who are trying to break the cycle and give more of our young people a strong male role model. To begin, I think that most people recognize we have been in this culture and in many parts of the world in a family crisis. And I think most of us uh, understand that a significant part of that family crisis has been the crisis of fatherhood, namely the absence of fathers in so many of our families. And one of the things that we need to now come to grips with is the clear evidence of the importance of fathers. And fathers and young men need to know about this to understand that as when they are called to being fathers, and I think all men are called to being fathers, fathers in some way. That doesn't mean necessarily natural fathers. You can be called as a mentor, as a leader, as a coach. There are many ways, but men's masculinity, I think, reaches its highest form when it is expressed in the loving guidance and attention uh, of a father. And so you can be a father in many different ways. I will talk most about the research which has to do with fathers who were biological fathers. Um, it's probably one of the best demonstrated empirical findings, namely the importance of fathers uh, for their children in the entire social science literature. It's also one of the least known in our culture and one of the least known um, kinds of intelligence and understanding, one of the least known in our media and popular society. First, Research has overwhelmingly shown that the presence of the father is extraordinarily significant for not only the mother, but for the children. What are the major findings? The commonest finding for boys who are raised without fathers is their very much higher increase of criminal behavior, juvenile delinquency, ending up in prison, and use of drugs. Now, the use of drugs and in involvement in criminal behavior is found in studies in the United States, studies in Great Britain, and studies in South America, studies in Europe, studies in Asia. So this is a universal phenomenon. Now, in the United States alone, 
we have a very high prison population. And so the social cost of boys being raised without fathers is enormous. Not only is it the cost of keeping them in prison every year, which is equivalent to the cost of a private education, but it's the cost of all those blighted lives. And so remember then that the, one of the major common findings is fatherless boys are very much more likely, not certainly, but much more likely to get involved in criminal behavior and in drugs. A second very important finding is that uh, children without fathers are much more vulnerable to emotional illness. This is apparently especially true of daughters. Depression is much commoner in daughters who, d who grew up without fathers. Um, it's also mental illness of other kinds is also more common in boys as well. But so. A second aspect of the failure of the father to be in the family is the statistical average of greater uh, psychological problems, depression, and so on. Tonight, a community is mourning the suicide of a 13-year-old who took his life at school. 7 Action News reporter Ronnie Dahl is live at the police department tonight. Ronnie, what a tragedy this is. Do police have any answers tonight? Well, sadly, police and family members may never have all of their uh, questions answered because that is the case too many times in a suicide. But the kids who lack fathers, I mean, first of all, they can find that to some degree in their friends. Okay. And that's often what fatherless boys do in particular. They, they, they go into gangs. In Los Angeles, suspected gang members got a rude awakening. Police arrested 46 in the wee hours of the morning, processing them at a makeshift command center near Dodger Stadium. The reason, a year-long investigation into the Avenue Street Gang, beginning after a county deputy was shot and killed in 2008. Those charged believed to be gang members. And they generate the missing men masculinity in the gang. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not so good because, like, what the hell do they know? Yeah. They, well, they don't know anything, right? Mm -hmm. They're just stupid kids, and they're, like, 15 years old, and their testosterone is pumping, and they're trying to get the hell away from their mother, which is what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And... And they're not in the right position to exercise any authority over themselves. So that's, that's not good. They can find it in education. They can find it in books. They can find it in movies. They can find it in sports heroes and so forth. Because the image of the father is fragmented and distributed among the community. Okay. But it's very, very difficult to not have a father. Right. And, you know, one of the things that we're doing in our society, which I think is, I think it's absolutely appalling, is that we're making the case that all families are equal. Mm -hmm. It's like, sorry, no wrong. And there's no empirical data supporting that proposition, by the way. It's much better for kids to have two parents. And now, one of the things we that we need to now come to grips with is the clear evidence of the importance of fathers. And fathers and young men need to know. Just because I have a penis doesn't mean I'm a man. It simply means I'm a male. I didn't become a man at the age of 18 or 21 when the world deemed me to be legal to drink, fight for my beloved country, and enter a nightclub. I didn't become a man when my first or second child was born. I didn't become a man when I made my first or tenth million. I didn't become a man when I won Super Bowls and played in the World Series. I didn't become a man when I slept with two women at a time. I didn't become a man when I had Lamborghinis and several cars in my driveway. I didn't become a man when I bought hundreds of suits with gaiters to match. I didn't become a man when many thought I was the man. I didn't become a man when you called me a role model, but I was a model playing a role. I became a man when I accepted responsibility of my life 
my ways in others. I became a man when I learned to love me and forgive me. I became a man when I stopped allowing the pain of yesterday to influence me today. I became a man when I realized I don't have to be the perfect father, but a present father. Um, it's probably one of the best demonstrated empirical findings, namely the importance of fathers uh, for their children in the entire social science literature. But it's very, very difficult to not have a father. Right. And you know, one of the things that we're doing in our society, which I think is, I think it's absolutely appalling, is that we're making the case that all families are equal. Mm -hmm. It's like, sorry. It's also one of the least known in our culture and one of the least known um, kinds of intelligence and understanding, one of the least known in our media and popular society. Like, I really do think that it's the sign of the degeneration of a society when that when, when single parenthood becomes anything approximating the norm. It's okay. not a good idea. And, the, and part of the reason I believe that, and, and I think this has to do with the um, overwhelming selfishness of, 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 of modern life, is that marriage isn't for the people who are married. It's for the children, obviously. And like, if you can't handle that, grow the hell up. Ser no, I mean seriously. Yeah, okay. Seriously. Once you... Once you, once you have kids, mm -hmm. it is not about you, period. Now, that doesn't mean it isn't about you at all, mm -hmm. but that just seems so self-evident to me. I can't believe that anybody would even, would even question it. Oh, it's so, been questioned. Oh, yes. It's well, horrible. I'm certainly aware of that. Yes, it's questioned. It's almost illegal to question it now, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, or illegal to make the set of propositions that I'm making. Mm -hmm. So, 